Today's topic is a very interesting one, but sometimes a controversial one. It's an evacuation policy known as the stay put strategy. Known to fire and rescue services as defend in place, whether or not it's used on a building depends on many factors, including the fire strategy for the individual building, although it is mostly used in residential buildings with apartments. A stay put policy involves the following approach. When a fire occurs within a flat, the occupants alert others in the same flat, make their way out of the building and call for the fire and rescue service. If a fire starts in a common area, all persons in these areas make their way out of the building and call the fire and rescue service. All residents who are in their flats and are not affected by the fire are expected to stay put until directed by the fire and rescue service to do otherwise. This process started in 1948 and was introduced into the British Code of Practice, CP3, Chapter 4, Part 1, in 1962. For buildings with flats over 24 metres, it stated, the assumption should no longer be made that buildings must be evacuated if a fire occurs and high-rise residential buildings should therefore be designed so that occupants of floors above a dwelling which is on fire may, if they choose, remain safely on their own floor. Its origins lay in an incident in Canada where an evacuation of an office block due to a false fire alarm caused panic and two people died on the staircases in the ensuing rush. A Canadian judicial review led to questions about the actual need to evacuate buildings with built-in fire compartmentation. The thinking behind the stay put strategy is that as buildings should be constructed so that each apartment can contain a fire for 60 minutes, those not in the fire compartment should be able to stay in their apartment whilst the fire and rescue service arrive and fight the fire. It is designed to keep people safe from stampedes down corridors and stairwells in the case of false alarms and to also ensure that in a fire scenario the stairways are left clear for the fire and rescue service. However, we've seen tragedies occur where compartmentation has been breached, meaning the fire has spread throughout the building and the key principle of the stay put strategy is, in that scenario, compromised. Sadly, in some cases, those at the scene have realised this change in situation too late, resulting in the deaths due to a combination of a stay put policy and failed compartmentation. Some advocate a centralised alarm system to warn everybody in the building immediately of a fire. However, we've seen issues such as the Bolton Cube, where alarm fatigue meant students thought that it was a false alarm due to the fire alarms going off daily. Many students ignored the alarm in the case of the fire and fatalities were only narrowly escaped. Stay put policies are challenging, as when compartmentation is correct and there is no risk of external flame spread, they're a good solution to preventing mass panic and the dangers that poses. However, one small failure in compartmentation can render the stay put policy immediately invalid. It is likely with this in mind that the new draft of BS 991 contains the following statement. In a building with a stay put strategy, all residents are always free to leave their flats if they wish to do so, e.g. if they feel unsafe, but to do so might, under some circumstances, place them at greater risk than remaining within their flats. It is down to those writing the fire strategy for a building and then the building management to ensure there is a suitable evacuation policy in place for the building. However, hopefully this video serves to raise awareness on what a stay put policy is, where it came from and some of the discussions surrounding it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want more content like this, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.